welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori and today I have a little different video for you. Um, it is a short week at work so I thought instead of doing my keto on Monday that we will talk about my weight loss journey. I have had several requests from folks asking kind of how this all took place and how I ended up on keto. Hi boys, I got both cats down here. So I took some time, I typed up the timeline, I have some pictures I'll share. Um, yeah, and we'll talk about how my weight loss journey looked or what my weight loss journey looked like. All right, so I'll put some pictures in. Now, my weight loss journey started in 2010. Um, so that was nine years ago. Wow, that's a long time. Um, so in 2010, I decided that I wanted to have um, bariatric surgery. I wanted to have gastric bypass because I was having a hard time losing weight. Read that I wasn't committed to any weight loss program and I weighed 304 pounds and it was just a miserable time physically in my life. I mean, I was a ha I feel like I was a happy person, but I wasn't physically happy with myself. So, started a new job in 2010 and my insurance wouldn't pay for bariatric surgery. Um, now, I lived halfway pretty much in between Columbus and Cleveland at the time working and a friend of mine who was a nurse had found a clinical trial that I could apply to be on and it was something new they were doing at the Cleveland in Cleveland at Case Western University um, and the study was could they staple your stomach from the inside out and I think the people that they were um, really looking to do this for were the super super morbidly obese like five six hundred pounds because it didn't require any cutting it was non-invasive so I applied to be in the study I went through all the steps required and trust me there were a lot of tests that I had to have done and I was accepted into the program so I was super excited the caveat if you will to this trial was that it was a blind study so of the, I don't even know how many people, say 50 people that were in the study, 25 of them received the surgery and 25 were put to sleep and woke up and did not have the surgery. But I wouldn't know for a year if I was in the study or not. Now, if I was part of the blind, meaning I didn't get the staples, then um, at the year mark, they would tell me and I could have the surgery if I wanted and they would pay for it. So I, I went through the process, I was knocked out, I woke up, I went home, and I lost like 50 pounds. So I was super excited. <coughs> Excuse me. The process was, they knock you out, they send a stapler down your throat into your stomach, and they staple your stomach from the inside out with titanium staples. Little tiny, tiny staples, but a hole all the way down and into your stomach. So I uh, woke up, I didn't know if I was in the study or not, went home, I, you know, measured and weighed and took care of everything like I was supposed to when I started losing weight and it was wonderful and then I went back in a year and found out that I was in the blind and I did not have the staples and so I had the surgery. And then, um, you know, I had to follow up with, with appointments and things and then all of a sudden, <coughs> excuse me, they canceled the surgery. I mean, they canceled the study because it didn't work. They found that the staples popped out of folks' stomachs and it didn't work. But I did keep that weight off, but I still didn't feel like I was done yet. So in 2012, I moved back to Columbus and started a job where I currently work now and my insurance would pay for bariatric surgery. So I went to the Ohio State University. They have meetings. I went to a meeting. I met with the doctor. <coughs> Excuse me. But because I was in that study, 
I had to have a, a scope of my stomach, which they had done several times during the study. So they just kind of make you drowsy. They stick a tube down your throat. They look in your stomach just to make you sure everything is okay. When he, they went in to do the scope, they found that I did still have some staples, but it wasn't in my stomach. It was up here, like where the esophagus connects. <clears throat> so I could not have bariatric or I couldn't have gastric bypass. So in 2013, so it took a while, but in 2013 in January, I had a gastric sleeve. And what that is, is they go in through, it was laparoscopic. They went in and removed 80% of my stomach. So my stomach with no food in it is probably this long, but it's, you know, the size of a hot dog instead of a football. And I was very successful with that. I lost another like 35 or 40 pounds. Um, the thing with the difference between the gastric bypass and the gastric sleeve, with the gastric bypass, you have absorption issues and your body just doesn't absorb. So you lose a lot more weight. With the sleeve, it helps me with um, portion control, but I can eat whatever I want. I don't have dumping and all of that kind of stuff. So there is a difference. Um, the gastric bypass, I believe your pouch can stretch with the sleeve. It supposedly cannot stretch. So, um, you know, you have to really police yourself. So I did really good with that until, oh, 2017, 2016, 15, my mom became very ill and I was a caregiver to her. I was taking care of her. I was not taking care of me. Um, I had put back on about 35 pounds um, of what I had lost. But more importantly, my diabetes was out of control. My blood sugars were high. Um, yeah, I was just miserable. So I, in February of 2017, my mom passed away. And um, about May, I really started thinking I was clinically depressed. I couldn't get out of bed. I was exhausted. I just was like trudging through life, but I wasn't living life. And I really wasn't understanding what was happening. And then on June 5th, okay, backtrack. In the end of May, I started researching and I started thinking I need to get myself into control. So I went to the doctor, had some blood work done. My blood sugars, like I said, were a, my A1C. Um, if you're diabetic, you'll know what that is, but it measures your highs and lows of your blood sugar. My A1C was 9.3, which is pretty bad. A normal non-diabetic person, you really are under six and in the fives somewhere. Um, and mine was 9.3. So I saw, I'm like, I gotta get rid of the sugar, carbs, the whole shebang. I didn't at the time know what I was moving towards. I just knew that sugar and carbs are bad for me. I know that I am insulin resistant. I have metabolic syndrome. These things and sugar and carbs do not mesh well together. And I knew that it was just doing it. So June 5th, I was researching, 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 and I found Cooking Keto with Christy, which was a website or a YouTube channel. And I started thinking, what is this? What is this keto that she's talking about? And I started researching and I had already stopped with the sugar and the breads but I was still eating certain vegetables and fruits, thinking that that was okay, but you know, it's not okay for me. So I went through my house, I took everything out of my house that had carbohydrates in it, literally everything. I took bags of food to work, I gave it to my family, gone. Went grocery shopping and I started the keto diet. Lifestyle, it's not a diet for me. Um, and I quickly lost about 35 of the 40 pounds or so that I had gained back. So I was kind of back to my pre-keto, pre, you know, when I was having, right after I had finished doing the gastric sleep. Um, and I've been two years clean, <laughs> two years without sugar and carbs. Um, right now I'm down about, total from my highest to now, I'm down about 90 pounds. Um, my highest was 304. I hover around 210, 215. So, you know, I am close to losing that 100 pounds. I really want to hit the 100 pound mark. But, you know, it 
it takes time and once you've lost this big loss like 90 pounds or so you know your body says eh and it puts on the brakes and I've kind of hit some walls and some stalls and I really need to kind of get back on track I have not gone off keto I'm not eating sugar I'm not eating cookies cakes pasta breads but I'm not count Ooh, sorry the cats are wrestling I'm not counting my macros like I should I'm not maybe getting enough fat so I kind of need to restart and go back and say you know let's start counting macros again and get serious about it um, because I want to hit that hundred pound mark and then my next goal is to get under 200 pounds so you know but I'm also 48 years old so we'll see how that all works out um, now as far as keto goes I try my hardest to eat clean keto so I don't net my carbs I eat if it's a carb it's a carb I stick with seven to ten and that's kind of where the carb creep comes in I need to get back to seven or under carbs per meal I need to stop snacking because I tend to be a snacker instead of a meal eater and I eat late at night which is terrible too so those are the things I know that I need to dial back but um, like I said I do clean keto so I count all my carbs I don't for the most part eat aspartame sucralose which is Splenda I don't eat malodextrin dextrose I try to stick with stevia erythritol blend yes I don't always but that's my goal is to stick with those sweeteners I minimize my vegetables I eat a lot of dairy and clean meats I stay away from preservatives that's how I do keto but that is not the only way to do keto there's lazy keto um, dirty keto I think they call it where you net your carbs it's you set your macros and if it fits you eat it I mean there's you know there's all different kinds of keto um, diet or lifestyle how people live it out there I just know what I do and how I try to do it um, the other thing that I need to work on is I need to stop baking for a while because that is a that's a bad thing for me I have a terrible sweet tooth and I love my and they're keto approved desserts but you can have too much keto food and so I need to just lay off the baking and go back to the basics but that's kind of where I'm at um, I know there was a lot of curiosity about my weight loss journey and where I started where I ended and I hope that answers your questions. But if you do have any other, my email is always below and I'm willing to answer anything I can or leave a comment and I'll answer that. And thank you so much for watching and you have a good one and I will talk to you later. Bye. Have a good 